Good morning, everyone. I'm Don Groth. I'm the plant pathologist here at the Rice Research Station. Today, I want to just talk a little bit about rice disease management. And the uh, big thing is we're going to look back at 2020 uh, and see what that means for 2021. You know, we've learned some lessons and there's been some changes that we're going to have to adapt to. 2020 was a, an unusual year, to say the least. Luckily for diseases, it wasn't as bad as what could have been. Uh, sheath blight started off early, but not come as excessive as it had been in some years. We did have problems with the strobilin resistant uh, sheath blight, the products that we have available that work against that fungicide, uh, fungus, are not as effective as the strobilins that we had for the wild type, but we are able to do a pretty good job with them. Due to the cold winter that we had between 19, uh, 2019 and 2020, we didn't have a lot of overwintering rice, so blast and cercospora did not get an early start, it did not get as an epidemic as we've had it in previous years. So uh, we didn't have the problem we had in the first crop that we could have had. Uh, second crop, cercospora started to have some problems, but uh, that wasn't the major problem we had in uh, the second crop. The hurricanes had a lot more damage than any disease could have been. The big thing we noticed was uh, last year was a lot of our new medium grain varieties, we saw a lot more blast. That's the call that I got more often was in the, well, Jupiter we know is uh, blast susceptible, the Titan we started to see blast, the C new CLM04, we also saw some serious leaf blast in that. The big difference between uh, 2019 and 2020 was the amount of the grain smuts we had. In 2019, we had one of the worst epidemics of kernel smut and small fall smut that we've ever have seen. This year, in 2020, we didn't really see that much. We saw some late in the season, but it wasn't anything near to what we saw in 2019. Might have been a different environment. I really think what we did was we got the fu correct fungicides out at the right time, and it, it kind of knocked the epidemic down. And that was very beneficial. We're going to have some changes in the rice fungicides that we have available. I've highlighted them in red. Um, remember, the, for blast, the strobilins, the uh, azoxystrobin and trifluxystrobin are the best, best materials available. Uh, for the wild type sheath blight, we have um, almost everything does a very good job against it, except for the uh, triazole, the propiconazole is fairly weak against it. Uh, when you, if you have the strobilin resistant sheath blight, you're going to have to use either the uh, carba carboxamates, the flatalanil and propraximid, which is elasia and circadus, or the uh, amistar top, which has the diphyconazole in it, or the artisan that has the flatalanil plus the propiconazole. Uh, for cercospora and kernel smut, we're relying on our triazole. It's the propiconazole and the diphyconazole that's in the Amistar top. Those are the primary products. The changes we're going to have, uh, they're no longer going to be selling GEM. That's the straight trifoxystrobin. They're going to be selling it as flint. It's basically the same product, used the same way, uh, but it's just going to have a different name. Big changes, Bayer is no longer be marketing Stratego this year. And that's going to be a big change because that's one of our major uh, blast materials. Uh, Sertigal uh, has the propiconazole in it. The label was changed, so there's going to be a 45-day pre-harvest interval that cuts out our heading application. So it, you're going to have to use for the, the use of trifoxystrobin is the flint. It's, a, uh, it's the best uh, blast material that we have. The simple thing is going to be is you're going to take the flint tech mix in some propiconazole, six to 10 ounces of propiconazole, and you're going to have effectively Stratego. Another new material that we had last year that I didn't really talk about much last year was Artisan. It's basically the Elasia with propiconazole in it. Uh, they were marketing it this year, uh, and it looked very good against a, a large uh, number of our uh, diseases, and it looked uh, very good and just, you know, 40 ounces per acre is a very high. We were supposed to have a new uh, fungicide this year called Axelia from Valent. It's in the same group as Alasia and Circadus, but because of the EPA uh, uh, 
Delays, we're not, probably not going to have that until next year. It's a very good product. It's used uh, two to four ounces per acre. It's going to add to arsenal, but it probably won't be available until next year. As important as picking the right fungicide, you need to get that fungicide out at the correct timing. For kernel smut, you need to get the uh, propiconazole or the dificonazole out at boot, about a two to four inch, maybe even up to maybe a six inch panicle in the, uh, the boot. This timing's critical. If you wait until heading, you almost have no activity to this disease. Cercosper, again, somewhere between boot and heading, usually does a very good job of controlling Cercosper in the first crop, in the, but if you plant it very late, the later you go, the earlier you need to put that material out, primarily propiconazole, also dificonazole, and some of the other compounds have cercosper activity. The problem is with that is the later you plant the rice, you're getting spores from the earlier rice infecting the rice planted later, earlier. So it needs that, remember, most of our fungicides are preventative, not curative. So you want to prevent the infection from occurring. Blast is even a little bit more difficult than the other diseases because you want to get it out at a very specific growth stage to get the best activity. About 50 to 60 percent of the head starting to emerge. If you're at boot split, count it as emerged. If you wait until it's completely out, it, you're too late. And finally, sheath blight, it probably it's one of our most important diseases, but we have a little bit better uh, activity against sheath blight no matter when you're putting it out. If Somewhere between boot and heading shoes is the best timing. If you wait until heading, it's okay. You might get a little bit of disease, but the heading application. The only time that we might want to go a little bit earlier, as early as PD plus seven, is if you have very early sheath blight or very severe sheath blight early in the season. Uh, you just, again, the, these fungicides are preventative, not curative, and if you let the disease get out of control, you're gonna have more problems trying to control that disease. The big problem with putting a fungicide out that early for sheath blight is you might have to come back later in the season with a second application to get seasonal long control. This will probably be the last time I show you this slide. This is boot split or uh, heading of rice. You can see that uh, what we want to do is just get uh, apply the fungicide, especially for blast, when the heads are just starting to emerge. If you wait until those heads are completely emerged, you probably have lost three to 500 pounds of yield potential in that uh, field. Okay, let's go look at each disease. Uh, let's start with the blast management. The most important choice you make is before you even plant the rice, and that's picking the most resistant variety possible. Especially in the Northeast where you're looking at alternate uh, irrigation systems, the furrow irrigated, alternate wet or drying, whatever you want to call it, you're basically dealing with upland rice and blast is a lot more se uh, severe under upland conditions and flooded conditions. Uh, so you, wanna, you don't want to put a very susceptible, susceptible variety into that type of situation. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting that blast season long and you might end up having to put two to three, even up to four applications to make a, a okay or mediocre crop because you're still going to have some damage. Again, uh, with all diseases, plant early. The earlier you plant, the less disease you have because you don't, as the season goes along, inoculum builds up and it gets more severe. Use modest amounts of nitrogen. That recommended amount is very important because the more nitrogen you use on all the diseases, the more disease you have. And if you try to push your rice with nitrogen, you're going to get more disease and it's going to be harder to control and you might not get a benefit from that nitrogen. With blast, the most important control method is keep it flooded. That flood stops leaf blast from developing. It's a physiological change in the rice and it's just a major benefit uh, that you can, once you flood it, you usually don't have to worry about leaf blast. W associated with that um, is avoid sandy soils. We've seen every time you, the heavier the soils, the less disease you have. It's a 
again, maybe a physiological, also you might lose the flood earlier if with a sandy soil, more percolation. Also tree line fields are more severe blasts because you're holding moisture. Every disease needs moisture to develop. So the longer the dew period, the more disease you have. On blast, you're going to have to plan on using one to two fungicides applications. If you have a susceptible variety and you don't have too much leaf blast in the field, a single well-timed application at heading will give you very good control. However, if you have a susceptible variety and you have a lot of leaf blast, or you have a very susceptible variety, we recommend using two applications. The first application at boot controls the amount of inoculum in that field. So it, it cuts down the amount of inoculum that the uh, heading application has to fight or control. And it just, uh, if you just try a single heading application, you have a lot of disease, you're only going to get 95% control. That still might leave a lot of disease out in that field. Cercospora, uh, we haven't had as big of epidemics last year, but we've seen in some fields and some varieties uh, some pretty damaging disease. Uh, the breeding program has found a resistance gene that they can use a marker for that they're incorporating this resistance in the current varieties and new future varieties. It's in the Rice Varieties and Management Tips uh, uh, publication. Uh, it shows if it has that resistance gene or not. They also have blast resistance, how good of blast resistance each variety has in that. And so, now, try to pick out the most resistant variety. Use the higher fungicide rates. Uh, when I first started looking at uh, Cercospro back in 2006, four to six ounces of propiconazole did a good job. It almost wiped out the disease. Uh, we've used so much propiconazole over the long, long, I don't know if you'd call it resistance, but it is more tolerant to propiconazole. You want to probably go in the eight to 10 ounce range. Above that, you're not really getting any benefit, but you want to go with that higher range. Remember, the later you plant, the more disease you have, so the earlier you need to put out the fungicide. Bacterial panicle blight is our only uh, bacterial disease. It's a, it's a warm weather when the temperatures start getting above 95 degrees during the day and say above 80 degrees at night. That's when bacterial panicle blight starts to rear its head. The uh, good thing about that is usually the other diseases, usually blasts and sheath blight stop developing to that, and that's when panic, but that you have bacterial panicle blight. We, because it's a bacterial disease, our fungicides do not have activity against this, that uh, pathogen. So we have some copper compounds that are labeled for bacterial panicle blight, but uh, I have not been really strong on using them because of the potential phytotoxicity and we're not quite sure how effective and there's no predictive mission method other than knowing what the weather conditions are going to be. But with the uh, reduction in the number of bacterial panicle blight susceptible varieties, I don't think this is going to be as much of a problem uh, over in the next few years. We had that epidemic last year in 2019 uh, with kernel smut and false smut. We had fields that uh, you could see orange to greenish uh, clouds coming out of the fields. We had combines turning black from kernel smut. Uh, this year we have not seen that, uh, and I'll get into that in a second. Again, uh, with all the disease, the earlier you plant, the less disease you have, especially with this disease. When I do, I usually do three plantings during my uh, growing season. I plant early in March for sheath blight, bacterial panicle blight, then an April planting, and then a May planting. Usually I don't see any kernel smut or fall smut until the May planting down here. With these diseases, as every disease, but these are a little bit more sensitive, the higher the nitrogen rate you have, the more disease you're going to have. Don't try to push your varieties with nitrogen. You're going to end up causing disease situations that you're not going to be able to. Propiconazole or the dificonazole at mid-boot, two to four inch panicle works very effectively. False smut a little bit more effective than uh, kernel smut. Basically, most of our varieties you can consider them probably susceptible or moderately susceptible. We've seen them in all the varieties and we really have had consistent enough disease to really screen for disease resistance. 
Again, timing is critical on this disease and it causes some problems in our uh, trying to control the other diseases. You know, two to four inch panicle at the kernel smut uh, is ideal. Uh, that's fine if you're working, uh, trying to control cercospora or sheath blight. This is a really good time to put out those fungicides most of the time, except for those cases where I mentioned earlier. The big problem is when you're trying to control both kernel smut and blast. The kernel smut has to go out at boot. The blast fungicide has to go out at that 50 to 70 percent heading. So what I would recommend, and I know you don't like to do it, but put out the propraconazole or difraconazole containing materials at boot, then come back with the strobone at heading to control the blast. I know it's two applications, but with these two diseases, it growth stages are critical for control. We had a fungicide uh, last year trying on Gemini, uh, CL Gemini, it's a, a hybrid that's very susceptible to fall smut and kernel smut. And you can see the blue bar there is the unsprayed check. And what we did was just in a four by 16 foot plot, we counted the number of heads that were infected with fall smut. We didn't have any kernel smut, we had fall smut. You saw about 50 to a couple of plots had almost 100 panicles with fall smut on that. That's a lot of smut in that. So we did have the disease pressure last year. The next three bars, uh, you hardly can see them because that is uh, 6, 10, and 16 ounces of propraconazole tilt uh, there. Virtually eliminated fall smut. I am actually surprised it was this effective against this, but if you put out the materials at the correct time, you get very good control. And I think that's what we saw this year. And that's why we didn't see as much fall smut last year. The second, the little bar, small bar, orange bar is Amistar. It's got the Definiconazole in it and it's very effective. We also included one of the uh, other materials, Alasia. It had some activity not complete control, but when you add the propraconazole as that has the, the next bar artisan, you got, again, very excellent 90-95% control of that. We also put in the straight difaconazole, that's the top MP, and it was very effective. The, any of the triazoles, either the propraconazole or the difaconazole, very effective against the material. Really, this, uh, that data didn't even show you the complete control that we were getting it. This just shows a picture of uh, the top panicle is from the unsprayed check. We had 20 to 30 galls per head on most of those heads that I counted. The panicle below it is one from one of the treated plots, and we only had one to two galls on those infected things. So the, we're getting very good uh, control of the false smut. I, uh, from work from Arkansas, they also have very good control against the kernel smut from these compounds. Key points. Know the susceptibility of your variety. Check your rice variety management tips. Look at it. If it has a very susceptible susceptible rating, those are the diseases you're going to have the problem. Once you get into moderately susceptible, moderately resistant or resistant material, normally that disease isn't a consideration. Manage it correctly, that crop. You know, think about it. Get out there. Plant, plant early as you can. Flood it up early and use the correct amount of nitrogen. One thing on planting date is, you know, you always have that field at the end of the season, late in the season, that, you know, maybe 30, 40 acres you want to go ahead and plant. Don't throw a blast susceptible variety into that field. You're just asking for trouble. Try to get the most, keep your most resistant variety for that late planting. Count for, the next thing is, starting about tillering, go out and scout for the presence of disease. If you don't know what disease is out there, or if you have disease or not, you're not going to know what to treat, and you're going to just be kind of blind. Starting at tillering, you're probably looking for blast. Once you get up into boot and heading, you're looking at for sheath blight. Make sure you identify the disease correctly. Remember, our fungicides are very specific to which diseases they control. Also, you need to, if you know which disease you have, you know, know what growth stage you need to apply those fungicides for. Why are you scouting for it while you're talking? I'm talking about it is make sure you check the growth stages so you don't get surprised. If you drive out there and all of a sudden you see a bunch of heads starting to emerge and you want to put out a blast fungicide, you're late. You've lost a lot of the benefits of a fungicide. Pick the correct fungicide, the mode of action, 
is important depending on what diseases you have. And apply it in, most importantly, apply it in a correct and timely manner. You know, don't spray just before rain. Get it out at the grow, right growth stage. Use a full uh, recommended rate. And then, if you can at all, rotate the mode of action. We've got the strobilin resistant re sheath blight because we kept just using the same product over and over. We have the tolerant Sarcospa because we just kept using the propraconazole over and over. I'd like to thank you for your support over the years. This will be my last presentation. I'm retiring at the end of January. I've enjoyed working with the rice industry and uh, I'll be around, but we're going to hire a new uh, plant pathologist that will be on board hopefully this spring. Thank you again.